What strikes them will strike her as well. Their promised appointment is the morning. Is the morning not close at hand? When our command came, we turned their cities upside down and rained down on them stones of hard-baked clay. Piled on top of one another in layers, each one earmarked by your Lord, and they are never far from the wrongdoers. The expression, turning their cities upside down, in all probability refers to the region being shattered in a powerful earthquake. According to a news story carried by the BBC under the title, Scientists Uncover Sodom's Fiery End, the British geologist Graham Harris was one of the scientists to discover powerful evidence on the subject. According to Dr. Harris, Sodom had been built on the shores of the Dead Sea and traded in the asphalt found in the region. This tarry substance was used in ancient times to waterproof boats and to hold stones together in buildings. Yet this settlement area, right by the Dead Sea, also stood on very unstable land. This was the point where two tectonic plates moving in opposite directions met. This was an earthquake zone. The layers of lava and basalt unearthed during the excavations are the strongest proof that there had been a volcanic eruption and earthquake here. The event described in the Quran in the words, rained down on them stones of hard-baked clay, was in all probability a volcanic eruption. The event described in the same verse in the words, when our command came, we turned their cities upside down, may well refer to the ruptures and destruction caused by the earthquake. Under the Dead Sea shores lie large deposits of flammable methane pockets. The earthquake would have set these in motion and ignited them. The ground would have turned into a quicksand and a massive landslide would have swept the city into the water. A series of scientific experiments at Cambridge University confirmed this theory. Scientists built a replica of the region in which the people of Lut had settled in the laboratory and induced an artificial earthquake. As had been expected, the earth was inundated and the miniature houses slid into it and were buried there. These archaeological and experimental discoveries reveal one important fact. The people of Lut discussed in the Quran really lived in the past and were punished for their perversions by a disaster sent by God. All the evidence for that disaster has today been revealed and is in complete agreement with the account given in the Quran. Once again, the fact is revealed that the Quran is the Word of God.
so the great blast seized hold of them at the break of day. We turned the place completely upside down and rained down on them stones of hard-baked clay. There are certainly signs in that for the discerning. Mount Vesuvius is a symbol of Italy, and especially of the city of Naples. The volcano is also known as the Mountain of Misfortune. There is a good reason for this. A city built on its slopes experienced a similar catastrophe to that which hit the city of Sodom. The name of the city destroyed on account of its rebellion against God and its perversions was Pompeii. These pictures portray what was once the busiest street in Pompeii. The city was a holiday destination of the high society of the Roman Empire and a symbol of wealth. The architecture of the houses was breathtaking. The people of Pompeii were very wealthy. Yet, instead of giving thanks to God for that wealth, they turned into a nation of deviants and gave themselves over to debauchery, and the city became a den of iniquity. Pompeii was best known for two things. One was the gladiatorial combats organized in the huge arena solely for the amusement of the rich. That savage spectacle had only one rule, to fight to the death. The second largest arena in the empire after the Colosseum in Rome was that of Pompeii. In the early years of Christianity, that arena witnessed the deaths of countless numbers of people solely because of their belief in God. This unbelievable savagery came to be the greatest form of entertainment for the people of Pompeii, whose consciences had withered and died. The second main feature of Pompeii was that it was the scene of the most ruthless implementation of the system of slavery, which prevailed throughout the Roman Empire. For a slave to disobey an order, there could be only one end. They were treated as worthless objects, bought for money. Yet the real oppression of the slaves by the nobles of Pompeii was something different. They were forced into prostitution. The perverted homosexual relations between themselves among the nobles ended in the rape of slaves no older than children. In short, their wealth had made the people of Pompeii degenerate and led them into a morass of perversion and deviancy. They had no idea what was about to happen. <laughs>